We come from a history that is not so kind. There's been generations of our people that have suffered and struggled, but we really want to pay attention to what it also taught us. We have the ability to take care of these most important resources in a much better way, and it, it really requires us all to have good conversations with lots of different groups. We've been working a lot to manage with our, our ideals in mind and our, our resources and what we've been taught. And now we're gonna be able to see it all come to fruition and see, you know, are we on the right track? ITERA, Indian Trust Asset Reform Act, was legislation that went through in 2016. It had a number of things for Indian tribes, but the one that we, we were really focused on was the ability to create demonstration projects that would allow tribes to go home, write a ITAM, which is an Indian Trust Asset Management Plan, how you would manage your forests if you had the ability to make all the decisions. It was so important because it was about sovereignty. It was about the fact that our tribe and our tribal government could make decisions and are able to show these things come to fruition, that these, these management decisions work. Something that's been happening even more so this spring is just getting people out into the tribal lands, out into the forests to harvest different products and just learning what we know, what has been passed down from certain tribal elders and just people that have that knowledge about what's out there in the woods, what you can use, how you use it, but also how you take care of it, and again, important to learn how you respect it. There were huge efforts, uh, federal policies that were intended for us to go away. It was not so long ago, 1954, was the Western Oregon Termination Act that was supposed to terminate us as a people. You're no longer Cocoa people, you have no claim to this, this place, this land, and it was decades of work by my great-grandma, my grandma, my auntie, and so many Cocoa people. And what it caused was just those conversations to remember what's important. It's about taking care of Cocoa people, not losing our culture and our traditions, being recognized as the people of this land, and to recognize the value of what we've been taught to how we take care of things still today. I think the connection that the Coquel tribe and the land have is it was, like any forest, a symbiotic relationship. We rely on the forest for building materials. We rely on the forest for food. We rely on the forest uh, for warmth. And then in return, we take care of it like it takes care of us. I love working for my tribe because it's land that my ancestors have been on for thousands of years, and it's land that I hope to take care of and provide for the future generations. I have a daughter that's three and a son that's two, and everything that I'm doing is for them and for the, the tribe. My grandma was one of the people who went back and actually helped get us restored or lobbied back in D.C. It means a lot to me. I mean. Not only is it my job, not only is it my forest, but it's my passion, it really is. The Forest for a Tribal Community provides not only an economic source, but it also provides a cultural source. We're able to go out and be on the lands that our ancestors were on. We're allowed to go out and forage, to cultivate, to collect native plants, to do certain crafts not only to have that product for ourselves, but also to teach our young ones that this is what we used to do. You get to see and learn that this land has more importance than just trees, than just money. It's, it's, it's a part of you. You have economic sustainability, cultural sustainability, and environmental sustainability makes a sustainable community, and same for tribal sustainability. We need a strong, healthy forest to support our cultural practices, but we also need the economic revenue from these forests to also support our nation. 
I've heard it called the Indian economy before. Just that idea that the money that we're making on these timber sales, it's going right back into the tribe. It's going right back into our programs, which our biggest programs are elder care, education, health care. So it all, all feeds hands in, hand in hand. And then with that cultural knowledge, we can take better care of the forest. It's important for us today to really start allowing our voices to be louder and talk about those things that we've been taught for generations. We're doing some pretty incredible work on Cocoa Forest and it's a, it's a small piece of our ancestral homelands and that really is a part of it, is really having access to the land and being able to teach our kids and grandkids on those same places. What we want to remind people is, is that the forest needs us as stewards as much as we need it. And when you talk about what's important to tribes and for the Coquille tribe, it's about the land, it's about water, it's about resources, and it's about our people being together still here and practicing our, our traditions and we are blessed. <laughs>